That was the scene earlier today outside the Hart Senate office building as demonstrators representing Black Voters Matter, Our Black Party, Color of Change, and others denounced restrictive state voting bills and called for an end to the filibuster. The protesters blocked the entrance to the building, leading to the arrest of 10 men, including Representative Hank Johnson of Georgia and our next guest, the president of Color of Change, Rashad Robinson. Rashad, thank you for joining us tonight. So tell us about the planning of going to uh, the, the Hart, uh, Senate building. How did this come about? Well, this came about, um, you know, Cliff and the, the team at Black Voters Matter, as well as all the other brothers were inspired by um, our sisters um, and their courage the week before and wanted to make sure that um, we were also speaking up and standing up um, and pushing back um, against this. And, you know, we have to take this fight to the Senate, both in terms of, of what you just talked about with Ezra in the last segment in terms of the filibuster, but it's exactly where the fight on voting rights lies right now. And so we started out at the Supreme Court because that's where the gutting of this legislation um, has been happening, the Voting Rights Act, which has um, for years been one of the most effective civil rights pieces of legislation that we've had in this country, and the gutting of it. And then um, we marched to the Hart Office Building, um, and we marched to the Senate because that is the place um, that, since its very beginning, has excluded our voices, has excluded our ability to express our will for a better future, is designed in a way to suppress our political power. And we brought our voices to this place um, that gets to dictate whether or not we're going to have a say in these upcoming elections, but essentially whether or not we will have power over our lives, power to make decisions about the future of our communities and the protection of our families. So uh, how important do you think it is for, for people like you, anyone else who is interested in, in protecting democracy to engage in these kind of direct actions? I always say, you know, all my heroes went to jail uh, because that was part of the, the tools that people use. They confronted the law as an unjust law or, 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 and put their bodies in the fray and they became part of the demonstration by allowing themselves to be arrested. How important is that today? You know, I fundamentally believe that when it comes to you know issues like voting rights, when it comes to issues affecting civil rights, we will always lose in the back rooms of power if we don't have millions of people lined up at the front door. And part of the work that I have to do and the part of the work that the other brothers have to do is to get people motivated to act, get people motivated to inspire to fight, get people motivated to push back against enablers, whether they be corporations, whether they be those Democrats who say they're on our side but are willing to actually do the things that you need to do when you're actually on someone's side. And part of that means is sometimes putting yourself in the gap putting yourself forward to be able to say, these are the ways in which we have to raise our voices. These are the ways in which we have to push back. At Color of Change, every single day, we're asking people to take strategic action, to hold corporations accountable, to uh, mobilize, to push back uh, against um, actions from elected officials. And so part of what I want to continue to do through this work is help more people feel like they can make their voice heard. That is the only way we are going to get done what we need to get done here. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, what's important about all this voter suppression that, that we have to remember is that there were no good old days. It's not like things were good before this voter suppression. It's not like the machines in our communities worked like they work in white communities. We were already putting rocks on our backs and going up the hill. And then they just keep making the hill steeper and keep making the rocks bigger. And part of what we have to say is not on today. We constantly hear these conversations about a divided country. We are so divided. But in fact, time and time again, what we say is that the things that we care about win the popular vote, win the popular sentiment. But there is a design in terms of our democracy that suppresses the actual voice of our people and our allies, and that has to end. And so part of the work moving forward is to continue to raise our voices and continue to make those that say they're on our side, um, but actually don't do the things to be on our side, nervous about disappointing us, creating consequences for their action, and to not let any of this um, happen in silence. 
Let, let's speak a little bit about those who are on our side. Uh, in your speech today during the demonstration, you spoke about black people who showed up for the Democrats on election day despite the pandemic. Do you believe that the Democrats are showing up for black people uh, uh, now that they are under threat in the way that they should be? I don't think that they're un they, they, they recognize how under threat they are. I think that because groups like Black Voters Matter and Color of Change PAC and, and so many Black PAC and so many organizations around the country get out into the field and mobilize our people despite um, these attempts for suppression, that the Democrats have gotten comfortable with this idea that we're just going to continue to perform even in the face of all of these um, attempts to suppress our vote. It's like this idea that, like, black people will just show up, you know, even um, when you make the hill steeper and you make the rocks heavier. And that right um, has to end, this idea that we will just continue to be mules for the Democratic Party without them actually standing up and making um, um, a, a, leg, a level playing field, making access um, to the vote um, an, an equal path forward. You know, part of getting power but, is actually but, but I, I have to say, Rashad, that sounds, that sounds like Senator you are responding. What, one second, Rashad. It sounds like right then you were responding directly to Joe Biden in that town hall last night. Is that, am I yeah. hearing this correctly? I am responding not just to Joe Biden, but I'm responding to the Democrats in the Senate who have to who have to use their levels, lever the power to press those senators who are holding us back here. But yes, to to President Biden, right? Like you just can't keep expecting black folks to overperform if you're not gonna overperform for us. And you know, I do wanna say that there's things like the child tax credit, which are incredible steps forward. There are other things that are happening that we wanna sort of celebrate, but I, it's gonna be very hard to go out into the field in 2022 and say to folks, well, the reason why we didn't get police reform, right, when racial justice is what drove people into the streets after the murder of George Floyd and led to that uptick in voter registration. The reason why we didn't get that is because of this thing called the filibuster. And let me explain the filibuster because we don't, because the Democrats don't actually want to get rid of the filibuster, but that's what was used to prevent um, anti-lynching legislation. That was what's been used to um, stall civil rights. But you know, they think it's a good thing in some ways. I remember sitting in Senator Schumer's office um, you know, in the early days of uh, Donald Trump, I was in his office um, in New York City, his district office, with a couple of other activists. And he looked at us um, as we were talking about and all lamenting and worried about the, the Supreme Court. And he told us that the, the filibuster was safe for judges because of the institutionalists on the Republican side, the people that he, you know, worked out with in the gym. And he named a couple of these institutionalists that would never want to get rid of the filibuster for judges. Well, lo and behold, the Republicans go ahead and get rid of the filibuster. When will the Democrats stop being Charlie Brown right. when Lucy pulls away the ball each time? When will they actually right. recognize that this is about power and use the power that folks have given them through the election, through the ballot, to actually build on more power? And that does mean ending the filibuster. Right. It does mean statehood for D.C. It does mm -hmm. mean these pieces that actually give black folks the type of voice we deserve. All right, Rashad, you're preaching now, and, I, and, I, and they're telling me I'm out of time. Uh, Rashad right. Robinson, I am glad you were able to shake off your shackles, sir, and join us here tonight. Uh, thank you for your time. More Prime after the break.